Well, good morning, everyone. And um, I don't know where you live, but it feels like spring where I live. And so today we're going to be painting this um, little nest. Thought it would be a kind of a fun subject with Easter coming and everything. And um, for the Patreon members, I've put up uh, three different um, reference photos. So I have this one here. And let me get rid of that. And then I have a few others with the colors, but I liked the way this one, and these are all royalty free pictures. And so I liked the way this one was composed and you could paint white eggs too, if you wanted to be a little more, you know, sort of give it that sort of modern decor kind of look, but I'm gonna stick with the blue, but use that photo to reference from. And so I've got out my paint and the camera kind of cuts it off the top there. I've got white, black, raw, uh, raw umber, yellow ochre, yellow, orange, red. This is some permanent rose in case I want to put, you know, maybe a few little flowers or something in. Some viridian, sap green, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and transparent oxide brown and transparent oxide red and some uh, teal. So that's what I've got out and I've got my turp jar here ready to go. I don't use any mediums and um, of course my brushes. And so that's it. And then I've got, uh, I'm gonna be using my uh, Viva paper towels for the original wipe off and that's because they are really smooth and so I like that for the wipe off. So, all right, so to start, I'm just gonna get a little bit of turp on my brush and I'll use a little bit of this transparent red oxide. And I'm going to add to it. Um, I'm using a real limited palette, so sometimes I'll add a little purple. Let me just see. Um, for some reason, I didn't put that purple out, but let me just see if I can find it. There it is. Some dioxazine purple. Just to give it a little bit more kind of warmth, I'm going to add a little bit of purple in there. And there. All right, so I'm just going to start off by getting that nice purpley brown. It's not, it doesn't look purple, but it just adds a nice sort of warmth to the color. So I'm just gonna get some of that on there. I've got a little bit of turp on my paintbrush to mix it in a bit to get it to spread. And then I'm gonna use this Viva paper towel and just sort of wipe that off. And for those of you watching, you can join my Patreon channel um, for as little as $10 a month. And then for all the full length lessons, you get um, full access at $29 a month. And you can join and cancel at any time. And don't forget if you're watching this video and you like what you see, do like and subscribe so that you can find out more and get alerted when I go live and stuff like that. So now I'm just gonna get a little bit of this um, transparent uh, red oxide. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that brown oxide into it. And I wanna sort of map out where the little nest is gonna go. And I think I'm gonna put some flowers around it too. So I'm going to leave a little space around the edge for that. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch out the basic shape there. And um, and I'm gonna kind of place where the little eggs are because I don't, I do not want them to get lost in the composition. I wanna make sure I'm happy with the space around them. 
So they might have to be a little smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to just sort of mark out where that edge is going to go there. So here we go. We kind of have everything there, and I can even put in a few hints of where some flowers are going to go. Oh. Around the nest. Hold on one sec, my I have a puppy in the house here. Had to let my my puppy out because it's like she knows I'm doing something here important and normally she just kind of sits there quietly but today <laughs> she's not gonna let me <laughs> so I'm just gonna now kind of um, put in some shadow around the eggs so I'm gonna take some of this viridian green and add it to some transparent uh, brown oxide and I want to get that dark in there right away that way I can really gauge the values when I go to put in the light the little eggs and get the detail in there. I want that dark value next door to them. So I'm just going to put that in there quick. And then I'm going to put a little of that um, purpley brown color in there. Just sort of in on the edge of that nest too, just because I'm going to have a lot of light pieces of, you know, the grass and everything, the twigs showing. So I want to get some of that color and kind of the, the basic form there so that those little branches will show up. And I'm going to put some of that purple kind of in the background too, just to add some for later. I'll have some nice layers to work with. So right now it just kind of looks like a big mess, but <laughs> trust me, it's going somewhere. Now I'm just gonna wipe some of that off. And Uh, gives it a little bit more texture and I'm going to just take my paper towel and kind of make this little point and kind of wipe off where those eggs are going to go because I just don't want that paint getting I don't mind it mixing in a little with the blue but I don't want a lot so I'm just going to reshape those and kind of wipe off the underpaint a little bit there. All right, and I'm gonna work on those little robin's eggs right now. So I'll start off with a darker blue. So I'm gonna use some of this ultramarine blue and you can even mix a little bit of that um, mixture you were using for the brown into it just to get a real dark kind of shadow color around there and I'm just going to put some of that in because in between those eggs it's quite dark so I'm kind of just marking off where they go with that dark blue like that and now I'm gonna get some of this cobalt blue and I'll go kind of around 
those edges again with the cobalt blue. And that way when I go to add the light part, it's gonna look round. If you don't get those shadows in, they'll just kind of look flat. Now I'm gonna get some white and mix that in. And for this, I'm just gonna use some fresh cobalt and white. No brown mixed in this time. And I'm gonna put in those highlights there. And I'm getting that bright, bright blue in there, and then I'm gonna blend it. So we're gonna kinda go with, we've got a dark and sort of a light. And I normally, if it wasn't something like this, I would probably, I wouldn't go right to the light like that, but cause I kind of know how hard it is to get that round shape. I'm kind of jumping to the dark to the light. Now I'm gonna go with a little bit of a mid-tone blue. So I'm gonna go and add some of that cobalt in there like that. I'm gonna go in and sort of add that shadow in there. And you just kind of, I'm leaving that edge a bit, the darker edge. And I'm just kind of putting in that darker blue for now. And I can always go back in and add, you know, some of the light. And I'm using, um, not using any, any medium right now, just painting in with um, the paint. And whatever, this surface is super slick, so you don't want to use a lot of uh, medium anyways when you're painting on these gesso board type things. So I can go back and add a little blue to the that lightest mixture and kind of you know, get a little more of the light blue back in there to sort of shape it and kind of blend the edge there. And I kind of lost a bit of the shadow, so I'll go back in with the the darker blue again and just sort of work that in there. That's the beauty of, of painting. You can just go back in and paint over it. And I'll use a maybe a smaller brush to do the details. But for now, that's um, a good enough block in. Now I'm gonna switch brushes and uh, go to something a little, a little bigger. Um, a num this number six flat will do. And this is one of those Princeton Summit brushes. And because they're kind of a nylon brush on these gesso board surfaces, I like them because they're very smooth, like the board. So now I'm going to get some of this yellow ochre, a little bit of this raw uh, sienna, and I'll add a little white to... Oh, I'm not going to add the white right into the middle of it, but I'm going to add a little white to them both and kind of mix them here at the bottom so I have some different colors of these, you know, the, the twig color has all these different sorts of yellowy brown. So again, sort of like what I did with the, with the eggs, you kind of have the dark and then the light, but then you can see now 
between the twigs is where you get the that underpaint showing, which allows you to see the little the little twigs. Sounds funny talking about twigs and and aches and all this stuff like this, but when you're painting, you don't usually talk about what you're painting, but when you're teaching, <laughs> it sounds funny because you're not used to actually talking about you know what I'm painting. When you paint, you just paint. So I'm using the edge of my brush to put some of those marks in. And you know, they're just there's hundreds of them in the in the real photo. There's just like lots and lots. So, you know, you can put as many as you want, but I think don't go overboard, otherwise it starts to look you know, like a photograph. So you kind of, you want to keep it simple. So I'm just putting some of them now across and that's why also it's good to get that dark um, color in there because then you can kind of whip some of those little pieces over and get some of that detail in there. And I want to put in a, some little flowers too, just sort of abstract, you know, I'm going to use some of this teal and I'm going to put in a few just sort of flowery shapes in the background just to make it a little more fun. Last time we did this I was too um, worried about just getting that nest in there just right and it was a bigger canvas and so I thought this time I'll have a little more fun with adding some flowers. If, you're, if I was painting white eggs in the middle I would maybe paint you know some white flowers just something um, sort of to make it you know kind of decorative so because that's kind of what people like they don't really they want it to look kind of decorative so you know when this is hanging on your grandson or granddaughter's wall or something it's not just like boom one big nest sitting there kind of makes it a little more interesting and so I'm just gonna pick a few Maybe I'll put a few leaves around it like it's in a tree. So I'm going to get some of the sap green and some of that transparent brown oxide. And I'll just put a few shapes in there of leaves. It's going to get a little bit of turp on my brush. Again, it's kind of like a theme like this is a very kind of whimsical crafty type painting. It's sort of something just that's kind of fun to do. So I'm just going to go around and kind of make some random shapes and then I'll come and I'll, we'll tweak them after. Just so we're not just you know, having this big blank spot around the nest too. This is just some sap green and a little bit of that transparent brown oxide. Okay, once you get some of those shapes in there, um, you can, I like to kind of soften up some of the leaf marks after I do them with uh, my paper towel. So I can just sort of, I can go around and sort of smudge the edges a little like that. You can see how it, it just softens the, the mark a little and makes it less kind of the focal point. So I'm just going to wear some of the edges off. 
before I get into the highlights on those. So you can see it kind of just really softens, makes them less important, softening the edge. Becomes like a pattern more, you know, like a tapestry almost in the background. Okay, and you can get some of that sap uh, green and some of the yellow ochre even. And maybe a little bit of this cad yellow light and you can go and add some now some pretty kind of same idea to some shapes that are a little lighter. So you get a mixture of green Um, in your painting and now you can see why softening the underneath um, marks was a good idea because it just sort of it just helps to get all this green on there in a way that's not too not too tight and and it's not overpowering the nest and the eggs Little flicks of that light green kind of make it come to life a bit. And you can even have some kind of just different shapes in there with that. Okay. Just kind of some of these edges are a little bit close to the edge and not off the edge. It kind of looks funny sometimes. So I'm adding a bit of that paint to the edge there. Okay, so I'm I like the way that feels, and I'm just gonna then go back to my nest because I've got now that green. And I'll drag a few pieces of that off the edge there. Like that. So I'm just pulling that off and then getting a little more white yellow ochre just drag some of those off there so now it's back on top of the green okay all right, now I want to go back to my blues and I'm just going to go and get some of that white and I might even add some of that turquoise in there to really pop the top of that egg right up. So I got the cobalt and the white and some of that teal color in there just to sort of bring up the color a bit. And you can add more white and even get a little bit of a lighter highlight there. And I'm going to go and lighten some of those flowers too. This, this brush is kind of get a different brush it's kind of got a round edge on it so it's hard to I'll go back to this is uh, like a little bright mix up some of that color and put some of those flower marks back on top of the the green there and you can take 
your time and make those flowers is more, you know, shape, like with more shape if you want them to be a little more, you know, pronounced in the painting, you can do that. But for the demo, I'm just sort of kind of showing you how they don't need to be perfect if you don't feel like getting too into the flowers. They're just there more as, you know, to kind of keep this color harmony going and kind of, it just kind of livens it up a little. And I put a little bit of that white and cobalt mix and just sort of maybe lighten this a little more on this side here. And again, something like these little eggs can be kind of tricky because you got to sort of get them round and, and get that shadow in there right. So don't feel bad. It's, it's not easy for me either to do. So it it's takes, just takes some time. I don't paint a lot of like plates and Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. So I paint more things like flowers and I'm not, I'm not as into things where I have to be perfect at getting the shape right. So this is a little bit more on the tricky side, but it, I don't feel bad because it's, they don't have to look perfect. And put a bit of the, some of the dark blue in here too. put some little dabs of white in the middles of the flowers or some of that light blue just to add some detail. And then I'm just going to check my values and make sure I'm happy with that. I'm going to probably go with some ultramarine blue and this brown oxide and just punch in a little bit more dark in there. And those little eggs will show up even more. And then go get some of that raw umber and just put a few little designs in there just so it's not completely flat. You don't want your shadow to look just flat. So. Go back in with that. No, add a little, just a few darker spots in the background too. You can put some shadow in around this flower here. Okay, so I think that's about it. You know, you can go in and do your own uh, masterpiece. You can use, um, you could paint the, the eggs pink or white and put little flowers around and make your um, Easter kind of scene and spring scene the way you would like it. And thank you for watching. And I look forward to our next live stream. Thanks for joining. Have a great weekend.